Now, here's a video that I want to share with you that seems to be a Christian youth pastor asking a question about the authorship of Moses in reference to the Torah or the first five books. And now he asked this question to a well-known and respected defender of the Christian faith, right? Or what is known as a Christian apologist. And so this Christian apologist in this video is Dr. Frank Turek. And he's a person who went to a seminary school and he earned a doctorate degree in ministry. And he's a believer of the faith, right? And I want you to look at what he knows and watch his response to the question. Here we go. So one of the questions that I have that have kind of um, been difficult for me to be able to comprehend is the documentary hypothesis. Yes. Um, for the first five books mm -hmm. and the understanding of the Old Testament and mm -hmm. the validity of the Old Testament and mm -hmm. how um, we have so much evidence to be able to prove the validity of the New Testament mm -hmm. and then its connection to the Old Testament. But mm -hmm. the understanding of a lot of the things that we read about from the Old Testament coming from a word of mouth. Mm -hmm. And then with the documentary hypothesis of many of us teach um, our young ones that Moses was the one who um, brought the first five books of the Bible together. However, with the documentary hypothesis saying actually many years afterwards that priests may have come together to bring the Le Leviticus together, um, that uh, a couple of other groups with uh, the word of Yahweh or um, even Deuteronomy being yeah. a completely different group. So he's asking about the documentary hypothesis that says that there are four independent sources that were created by uh, different authors that were woven together to create the Torah. And he's trying to make sense of what to do with this information or how to approach it because he teaches young kids that it was Moses that wrote these uh, uh, scriptures, right? Just like a lot of us were taught growing up. And so here is what Dr. Turk's response was. There's a lot of speculation among secular scholars over how the Old Testament came together. And the documentary hypothesis came many years ago that says there were at least five sources of the Old Testament, particularly the, the books of the Pentateuch, and to the point where they were trying to say, well, this verse was written by the priestly source, and this verse was written by this other source. And it's a lot of speculation. In recent years, that hypothesis has kind of gone away. Okay. It's not really widely accepted anymore. Now, right here, the good doctor is not being completely honest and is showing us an example of why it's important for you to be studied up. He said the documentary hypothesis had kind of gone away, right? As he's painting a picture as if it's like a thing in the past and like it's old news. Now, if this were true, that the documentary hypothesis has kind of gone away, then he'd have to explain why the University of Chicago Divinity School teaches it, why Harvard Divinity School teaches it in their program, why Princeton Theological Seminary School teaches it, and uh, Professor Joel Baden, who wrote an entire book on the documentary hypothesis called The Composition of the Pentateuch, he teaches an entire course on it at Yale Divinity School, right? Now, these are four of the top divinity schools that you can attend here in America, and they all teach it, right, as well as others that teach it too. So that's not true that the documentary hypothesis has kind of gone away. Now, what Dr. Turek is hinting at are other accepted explanations on who wrote the Torah, which to a large degree come from the European schools. They teach a variant of the documentary hypothesis, which Dr. Richard Elliott Freeman addresses in his book. So let's go in here and let's look at what he says in here. This is what it says. Many new variations on the documentary hypothesis have emerged, especially in Europe. A group has emerged in Israel and the United States called neo-documentarians. That's, that means new documentarians. The difference between that group and the good old-fashioned scholars of the documentary hypothesis are small. All these variations, documentary, supplementary, fragmentary, neo-documentary, are in agreement about the central point that the biblical books were composed by many different authors at different times, not by Moses, not by any one person. The central point remains unrefuted. The differences are in the details. And still, no variation has attracted a larger consensus than the documentary hypothesis. So according to Dr. Richard Elliott Freeman, the documentary hypothesis 
has the largest consensus right now. Does that mean that it is absolutely correct because that's what the majority of the scholars agree with? No, that's not what it means. But it does demonstrate that the hypothesis has not kind of gone away, right? Like the good doctor is explaining. And so it also explains why the top divinity schools in America still teach it, right? Now, even if the documentary hypothesis really did kind of go away, we would still be left with the other variations that still agree that the Torah was written by many different authors at different times and not by Moses, right? So you're still back at the same spot. Most of the academic scholars, they've moved past the Mosaic authorship. And you're about to see right now that the good doctor himself has also moved past it, right? So let's continue going in the video. But I think all scholars agree that there were editors of the Old Testament. Here we go. So he knows. What does he know? That people have been editing the text. Now watch how he deals with this. Right. right. Which could have been part of the inspiration process. Nobody said that Moses had to write all of the books of the, of the Pentateuch. Obviously, there's an account of his death in there. Right. That was written by somebody else. So there were editors of the Old Testament. But okay. th there's, that shouldn't trouble any Christian. Right. So I would say, okay, so let's say there are many people that had a hand in pulling together the Old Testament. What does that prove? It proves that people have been strongly believing things that have turned out not to be true. And this matters a lot. And it matters a lot because a lot of people, they invest their entire lives believing these stories, right? Believing these stories and these traditions. And they believe these things to be completely true. And these things can be devastating when they find out that some of the things that they believe so strongly are, are not true, right? And so I remember when I had left the faith years ago that there was a period when I had looked back and I felt a sense of disappointment, right? And I felt disappointed because it appeared that I had wasted a lot of my time dealing with these types of beliefs, right? I felt like I could have used that time dealing with something that was more productive, right? But when I got back at my center of understanding that everything always works out, right? I was able to deal with that uh, period and accept that period as being just a necessary step in my life's journey to get me where I'm at today. Okay. Uh, now you can obviously get evidence for certain events in the Old Testament. There's a lot of archaeological evidence. There are some historical things you can discover that really did occur in the Old Testament. But one of the reasons I believe the Old Testament's true is because Jesus did. And as I said earlier, I just have a personal policy. If somebody rises from the dead, I just trust whatever the guy says. And that's what it really boils down to for him. Not necessarily the facts that could be agreed upon, but rather his faith, right? His faith that a person actually rose from the dead and spoke certain words. And so the fact that the Bible says it, that's enough evidence for him, right? And one thing that we have to understand is that Everyone has their own set of standards when it comes to the evidence, right? And so for most Christians, the fact that the words are written in the Bible in red, that's good enough evidence for them to believe the biblical accounts, right? That's good enough for them. And that's understandable coming from their tradition, right? Which is based on faith and belief. And so, for example, Romans 10 verse 9, it says, If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved, right? It didn't say go do archaeology to find out if, uh, if there's any historical evidence for a Jesus or to use your intellect and, and to reason out if a person really rose from the dead. It said to believe, right? And that's what a lot of them are doing. They're sticking to the tradition. We have to understand that. So we appreciate the good doctor and the student for providing this example. And hopefully this video has been an eye opener for someone out there and has strengthened someone to climb just one more rung on that ladder out of the pit to get into the free world where life is much better and it makes more sense. And so I want to thank you for watching all the way into the end. My name is Brooklyn St. Michael and I'll see you in the free world.